Okay, so I want to do a quick video going over how the instructions that we write for assembly get translated to actual usable machine code. In other words, whenever we write out instructions that get loaded into ROM for the computer, what does the computer actually see? Because it's not seeing the instruction set. It's going to see binary ones and zeros. So this is the translation from the actual human readable instructions to the actual machine binary. So let's take a look at that real quick. Okay. One sec. There we go. So as stated already before, this is the overview of the computer. We have all of our address register here, the data register, the address register being tied off to ROM and RAM, and ROM storing the instructions. That's what we're looking at today. So, as a reminder, well, we have two types of instructions. We have A instructions, C instructions. A instructions, very simple assignments. C instructions are going to be computations tied to our ALU. So that's all the actual arithmetic computation that our system does. So, both of these instruction types will be translated to 16-bit values because we have a 16-bit value computer. The main identifier in this 16-bit string is going to be the most significant bit, so the leftmost bit. That will dictate if we are doing an assignment instruction or a computation instruction. So keep that in mind. So just like in some of the previous videos, we're going to start with the A instructions just because they are simplistic. They're very easy. All it's doing is loading some value into the A register. Now, side effects are that RAM and ROM will be adjusted because they're tied to the address register. But at the end of the day, we're really just adjusting the A register. Whether that be through an actual constant value, through a variable, through a label, it's some number being loaded into the A register. So, symbolic wise, it's at some, some decimal value. Doesn't really matter. But the binary of this is the most significant bit is zero. So again, I've said this before, I know, but this is the 15th bit. It's the zero bit. So least significant is the rightmost. Most significant is the leftmost. So we have this example here. We have at six. So the most significant bit gets set to zero and the remaining 15 bits over here get set to six in binary. So that'd be one, 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 well, one, one, zero. And then you pad out the rest of it with zeros. And that's essentially all A instructions are. Just the most significant bit 15, the remaining 15 bits are going to be some 15 bit value in binary. That's about it. Now, uh, C instructions, um, gonna be a little bit different. They're far more complex. We've already discussed how the setup is. We have maybe A equals zero, some constant value here. Maybe we have D equals negative M with a register being loaded into a register. And then maybe we have something a bit more complicated, such as say D equals A plus, uh, not zero, but A plus one, or maybe M equals A plus D, something like this. So there is a lot of versatility happening here. So the translation process is going to be significantly more involved than the A instructions were. And this is kind of everything the C instructions can do. Now, right off the bat, the syntax is very important here. So we have dest equals comp semicolon jump, with both dest and jump being optional. And the reason that is, is because we either have the form of destination equals computation or computation semicolon jump. So we've seen these formats before. So dest equals comp would be something like D equals M, with M being the computation, D being the destination. And then we've also seen the jump before whenever we have D 
JEQ, D is a computation, JEQ is a jump. So technically, a valid hack instruction could be something like this. This would register as a valid hack instruction. Never do this. Ever, never, just never do this. But I digress. Essentially, anything that we can put in the format of destination equals computation semicolon jump will translate to some 16-bit value that the computer can process. Now, like I just said, not every valid instruction is going to be a useful instruction. So, even if we can make all the different computations work with some varying form of a destination and a, a jump, there are time and places to use destinations and jumps. You usually don't combine them. And if you do, you do it in some uh, intelligent, discernible way. You don't just throw everything into every register and basically stuff like this there's no reason to do this ever unless you want to zero things out after you job this might actually have some like use case but like it would be extremely niche to do something like this uh it, it would work but it would be very very silly to do so but i digress moving on let's take a look at the actual binary what's happening so let's take a look symbolic computation mandatory there is a computation in every single c instruction hence why it's a c instruction and why c is computation so destination can be null jump can be null if it is equal sign is omitted and for jump semicolon is omitted but for binary it's just the same 16 bits it's going to be what gets set to 0 and 1, obviously. So, in this case, notice the first three bits are 1. In the A instruction, well, the 15th bit was 0. Most significant bit was 0. And that is perfectly fine. That is the opcode, the operation code here. The opcode here, 15, or this 1 in the 15th place, is the opcode for C. These two are not used in C instructions, so we just set them to one as well. We really don't care until we get to this A, these six C's, three D's, three J's. These are going to be the bits that we actually care about in terms of understanding what are we looking at. So we look here, we have an example of symbolic being D semicolon JLE. And if I look at this, I can read that this is gonna be 111, so I know it's a C instruction. I know what this A bit does. I know what these next six bits do. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. And I know what these three, or these two sets of three bits do. If you look at the next few slides, you'll see the actual different translations, and this 16 bit string will make perfect sense. Right now, it probably just looks like a bunch of random ones and zeros it's not none of the c instructions none of the 16-bit values that we're going to see are random or arbitrary at all they are very literal because the assembler takes in the actual symbolic code that we write and will translate it perfectly to these binary strings it is not random it is not by chance it's not going to alter ever. It is a one-to-one -one translation. So, let's take a look at how that works. This is kind of the breakdown here. 15th bit is the C instruction opcode. Always a one. These next two are not used in C instructions. We do need it for A instructions because we have 15-bit values. So we need 15 bits to actually load in that type of value. We don't need it for any instructions, so we just set them to one. Doesn't really matter. 
I don't think too hard about whether these are zero or one. We don't really care. Symbol is going to set them to one for us. Now, this A bit is one of the seven computation bits along with these six C bits. They're going to have some particular use case that you'll see in just a second. The next are three destination bits and then three jump bits. So again, destination, these three, computation, these seven, jump, these three. So all of them will have some literal translation. We're going to start with computation as it is the most complex. It consists of seven bits. The first bit determines if the A or M register is being used, and that means being used in the computation, not in the destination, not in the jump, in the actual computation if the A or M register is being used or not. The remaining six are the inputs to the ALU. So if you look at this chart, you should recognize it in terms of the zero, the one, negative one, D, A or M, etc., etc. These are the control bits that dictate what arithmetic computation is happening. So, that explains the C bits very well. But this A bit, if A is one, then that means we are using the M register. We actually care about memory in the computation. So we might have M, not M, negative M, M plus one, D minus M, D and M, so on and so forth. We determine that A is one, so we are using the M register. Anything else, whether that just be the, the constant values of zero, one, negative one, D, A, etc., etc., that would be zero. But really, we care about primarily the M register. Whenever I say the terms of A or M is being used, that is because if we ever have one like this, if A or M, not A, not M, it's always going to be either or. And that is due to how the ALU works. The ALU, we're going to learn this in the next chapter specifically, but I'll go ahead and touch on it right now. I mentioned it in a previous video as well. But we have the X and Y input to some output, right? So this is going to be the D register, always be something, some data. And then we have inputs for A or M. So Typically, you don't use A and M at the exact same time because of stuff like this. But I digress. Moving on, we have the destination bits. This is going to be what register are we storing the results of the arithmetic from the computation. That's why you end up with a format of dest equals comp. So, you would omit the jump usually here. So the options are null, A D or M. Com alignment for the table that you see over here is A D M. A D M. So if we're not storing it at all, it's going to be null. They're all zero. If we're storing it in the M register, then we can tell that the third bit, that's always going to be one. If we're storing it in the D register, the middle bit will be one as well. And if we're storing it in the A register, then the leftmost bit will always be one. So there is some method of how this table works. It's not just randomness. It is a setup of columns of A, D, or M, and it translates to something very literal. Now, moving on, we have something very similar in the case of jump bits. So same thing, some table, column, binary ones and zeros based on what we have. In this case, we're doing computation, jump. So we are looking at typically something like DJLE. But D in the computation that you see in all of these. Because again, computation is mandatory in every C instruction. And this it's going to be a line of leg, L-E-G. Okay, so for Celestan, 
leftmost bit. If it's equal to second bit. If it's greater than the rightmost bit. And that's about it. If it's null, we're not jumping. If it's J and P, we're always jumping. So we're jumping if it's less than, if it's equal to, if it's greater than. If it's null, we are not gonna jump if it's less than, we're not gonna jump if it's equal to, we're not gonna jump if it's greater than. Meanwhile, if it's J, let's see, in E, we will jump if it's less than or greater than, but never if it's equal to. That's kind of how that works. Not too bad. And this is probably one of the most useful slides in the entire course, especially when it comes to assembly and this entire paradigm for the hack instruction set, because it gives us the A instructions, all of its explanation, the C instructions, all of its actual explanation, the symbolic and binary formats, the predefined symbols are here, what the computation results are, how the A bit works, destination table, and the jump table. It gives you pretty much everything at a glance for how we process the assembly instructions and how the computer will translate them or the assembler will translate them to binary to be passed into the computer. So that is pretty much the general gist of how the assembly the hack assembly instruction to 16-bit value binary data works. So we have the A instruction and the C instruction. The opcodes dictate, are we doing A, it'll be zero. If we're doing C, it'll be one. And if it's A, it's just zero. 15 bits that represent whatever data you're storing. C, well, it's a one. And then some, uh, some table lookups, basically. So C instructions are going to be a little more contrived and how you actually solve them. So it is going to be best to look over those tables and be good at reading the place of what you're actually reading. So at some point you can actually look at the 16-bit values of like the binary data and disassemble some of that back to the instruction or you take a look at the instruction and assemble that down to the actual binary. So it's a one-to-one -one translation both ways. You can assemble it or you can disassemble it. But with all that being said, hopefully all of this does make sense. None of it's too confusing. And overall, I hope you learned something. So, I'll see you in the next video.